Ah, that is so bad. In this series, I'm gonna share with you some techniques that just help make a photo pop a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and show you another tip I found out about this here speed light that I picked up for $39.95 at our old friend Walmart's house. One of my favorite techniques to make something look just a little bit more special, I like to call composite flash painting. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You just light paint, but with a flash. It's really useful because it gives you what feels like an infinite control over the possibilities of the light in your scene. So as we do this, you can just see each one's got its own specific thing. So it's super, super fun in that way, but it, it's, it's got negatives too. I did take somewhere between 65 and 70 photos for this one, and sifting through that many is not, you know, the most fun process. Just maybe, uh, I don't know. That looks good. We can get rid of, uh. I like it. I like that, but I don't like this. Yes. Oh, I hope it's over soon. There's way too many photos to edit. On top of that, I had never actually opened up Photoshop before. I'm gonna take number 36 now, and... We are gonna be learning together, and then I'm gonna edit out all of my dumb parts, and I'm gonna seem like I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Smart objects. Stack mode. They say the best way to learn is to teach. So here's how you do it. Set up your camera on a tripod like you were taking a normal long exposure photo. You're gonna wanna go for something like a second and a half plus. Uh, 1.6 seconds, ISO 200, and we've got two filters on the end, a circular polarizer and an ND4. I had a decent amount of light reduction, but with the second and a half exposure, I could still get a halfway decent looking image. However, it was definitely still too dark, and that's the key. You wanna make sure that it's dark enough to where when you add light, you're actually making a focal point of each image. So you wanna give yourself enough time to hit the flash before the exposure ends every time. You feel pretty stupid when you miss that uh, little window. I've selected the Wi-Fi button in the main menu setup. Now I just have to select the Wi-Fi signal that's coming from the G9 in my regular Wi-Fi settings on my phone, which is right there. It's got its own Wi-Fi network. This is a direct connection, and it'll give me access to completely remotely control the camera. And if I had a regular Micro Four Thirds standard lens that came from Olympus or Panasonic, I could control even more functions. Obviously, this one's manual. Anytime that you're stacking images in Photoshop, you're always gonna wanna take what's called a clean plate, and that's just a photo that doesn't have any of the added light in it. This can be used as a reference, and it's always the bottom layer. When you first take your clean plate, it's definitely important to remember that the one thing that you're gonna be able to change in this photo is the light. So make sure you're happy with your composition. I definitely recommend leaving a little bit of extra area on all the sides, that way you have room to crop, because there's oftentimes gonna be something that needs a little bit of correction, whether it be lens distortion, or maybe there was something in the shot you didn't want there. It's definitely a good idea to go ahead and back it up just a little bit once you find that perfect composition. If you are gonna be doing this with JPEGs, keep in mind that your white balance is gonna look different for the flash than it is for uh, just the regular ambient light. So your clean plate's probably going Going to be a bit tinted um, so I'd recommend taking one with an adjusted white balance for that but once you have your clean plate and you're happy with everything now it is time to go on ahead and start adding light go around the vehicle and add light from different angles and really just experiment to see what happens now when you're first starting out it's definitely recommended to try out a bunch of new things and you know see what works and what doesn't however the more that you shoot right now the more that it's going to take time later to sift through all those images and decide what's a keeper versus what's just you know, the more you do now, the less limitations there are later though, so it's definitely something to keep in mind. So when you add light, you're gonna wanna take sort of a glancing angle, and you're gonna really want to accentuate the angles and the curves, sort of take attention away from things that aren't important. Later on, I did turn the lights on in the garage, that way I could have a little bit of an explanation as to where all this light's coming from. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's coming from above or, or below, that's gonna be more of a motivational thing, and you do wanna think that through. You wanna be like, okay, so where is this light coming from in this photo? Does it make sense visually? Because the one thing you want to avoid with these pictures is making them look too fake. 
Uh, when you're manipulating light in these ways and, and stacking it up, you can have light coming from practically all directions and we really hardly ever see anything like that. Once you get all of your photos taken, now it's time to make sure, make sure that you haven't missed anything. Now, one of those things that I missed was, in fact, the lights. So after I got all of my first batch of photos, I went back around with the lights on and I did it one more time and I took probably about 20 photos this time. I had a better idea of where I wanted them. The only limitation with this whole system that I've come across is that it really doesn't work outside of maybe, say, 20 to 35 feet away from the camera. Now, that's usually not that big of a deal, but that can be a bit of a pain when it comes to using something like a longer lens. Not that big of a deal for most people in most situations, just wanted to get that out there because it is something that has hampered me in the past. So once you get all of your exposures and you pack up and get home, it's time to begin the grueling ordeal of post-production. Here we are in Photoshop, and what I've done is I've actually over adjusted my exposure on this image to really get the light up, but it's actually gonna add some muddiness. So what I've done is I've just changed it to 80% opacity. That way we're not really getting any detail from highlights or dark shadows. And it's just sort of gonna be there for layering and uh, those, those sort of purposes. If, if we're speaking After Effects terms, which I am fluent in that first, so, um, these are like your pre-compositions, and then these are like your layers here. You know how these say layers? Um, I can't read. <clears throat> this one, number 42, so then we go to this one. Does it have anything of value? I like 42. So now we have to take this one, go under Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. Then we can now Control-C, Copy, and um, yeah, editing will make me look like I didn't do that on accident. Now we just control V paste and of course change the blending mode to lighter color. Now we can toggle on and off and really see what each layer has to offer. In order to see more of what the layers are doing and less of just the ambient light, I'm actually gonna turn off our clean plate. Now I have a better idea of what's actually being adjusted. You might be sitting there going, Luke, that's great. I see how you can manipulate the light, but you've got all these freaking orbs chilling now. Let's take this one, all right? So you don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it, and it may be that I'm doing it in a bit of a dumb way. So take it with a grain of salt, of course. However, then we just remove that. And once we bring back the other layers, it all normalizes itself. And we can do the same with this after we re and there we are. So it's very, very simple when it comes all down to it. However, this part is probably the most lengthy part of the process in my case, so it very well may be that there's an easier way to do it. Let me go ahead and show you what we came up with. There's our clean plate at 49% transparency, and I'm actually going to start from the top, and here we are. So as we do this, you can just see each shot has its own bit of light that we're working with. And each one's got its own specific thing that it's accentuating and that it's bringing out in the photo. Now what I'd like to do 
with this because it's really easy to make these too much, you know, and I think we're kind of there right now. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to see how many I can remove and from where, you know, if there's a, a place that feels kind of busy, then that's probably a good place to start until it seems just a bit tidier, I'd say. Like that one. That one's fine. Now that one, that one I think can go. Is there anything good about this one? There is one thing good about it, and I like that it's adding light right here on the chair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool. Uh, and it doesn't need to take this long. The reason it's taking me so long right now is because well, here we are. <laughs> I'm making a video about Photoshop, and as it turns out, I don't know even the basics of Photoshop. What layer am I on right now? Interesting. Well, this one's got, this one's got sort of some goods and bads about it. I definitely like this kind of thing going on up here, but I think it's untidying things a bit down lower. So, all I have to do now is while I've got the layer selected, we're just going to erase away what it's doing down here. Perfect. So it's it's really just tweaking and, and getting all these little details a little bit closer to where I want them. And that's gonna be the process for much of the uh much of this portion of it. I hate how my iMac wobbles around <laughs> when I when I have to use the eraser. And I think this entire bit of the rack just looks a whole lot better without this layer. And we don't need to draw attention beneath the drum pad. And it's really just making decisions based off of stuff like that. You know, what's adding to the image, what's taken away from it. And you can, you can get real deep into this. This can be quite the rabbit hole. And I think this layer, which is, which layer? This one, okay. This one could probably be brought down. And then just alluded to. Let's take a closer look over here. Ah, looking at this screen is killing me. That ah, looks pretty good. See, these are different exposures here. That's why I'm checking on this one. Oops. This is embarrassing. <clears throat> that is looking pretty good. Let's just maybe... Oh, I don't know. That looks good. We can get rid of it. Uh, I like it. I like that, but I don't like this. Yes. Oh, I hope it's over soon. There's way too many photos to edit. Oh, yes. That is looking good. I've been using the fill by mistake and not the opacity. And that's probably why it's been looking just a bit off. Once we finish up with our opacity adjustments, then we can just do a final grade over the entirety of the image. And we can be done with Photoshop. <laughs>